Hello everybody and welcome to the Sam's Report. It is the end. It is the end of March. Um, speaking of that, I will throw someone under the bus, but I will not name them. Uh, another Microsoft writer said that Service Pro 5 was coming out in March. Not happening. It's not happening. It's the last day of March unless Microsoft is just going to you know, slide that one right into their website and not alert anybody, which I don't think is true and I'm definitely not under embargo. So if somebody is launching Service Pro 5 today, I would be very... Uh, I, I would be very shocked. Not to mention that launching products on a Friday is typically not a good thing to do. Uh, they launch movies on Fridays because then people go to the theaters on the weekends to, to watch them. But you typically don't launch hardware or any of that kind of stuff unless you're just like, eh, whatever. Um, anyways, uh, logistical things, whatever, background stuff. So we are still giving away two Surface Studios on Therat.com. Uh, it's part of the Xamarin Challenge. I will, again, include this link in the YouTube stuff. But that's XamarinChallenge.Therat.com. Uh, gets you up to speed on what Xamarin can do. Honestly, it's probably about 90 minutes of your time. It's not too hard, actually. I've gone through some of it. And we're giving away two Surface Studios, like two of them. And not that one. That's a review unit. So don't think that I'm putting my dirty, grubby paws all over what could potentially be your fresh and clean Surface Studio. But we're giving away two of them. And I can tell you this that, well, I can't say definitively, but I can say from the best of my knowledge, this is probably the best chance you could ever have in your life of winning one of these things. So don't take that as absolutely absolute fact, but I know the odds, uh, and it's pretty good. I mean, all things considered, especially when you consider, like, traditional giveaways and sites where it's just, you know, you just type in a comment to win. Whatever. Uh, moving on, because that's the past, and now we're talking about the future. Creators update Microsoft announced this week. We, <laughs> Microsoft, like, told, whatever, they, this is awkward how long it took them to get this information out. But anyways, uh, the creators update is coming out April 11th. And for phones, you know, where's the phones for these guys? It's coming out um, the 25th. And so a couple, a couple things to note here, which if you've read the blog, you already know this, but the uh, update is going to be coming out to new devices first, right? So if you go buy uh, a new Windows 10 machine, it's going to have the creators update on it. I would assume, well, I mean, there's going to be some backlog of stuff, but uh, those are going to be the first machines to get it. And then they were rolling it out to existing devices, and it's going to take several months. Microsoft told me um, it's, they're going to do this slower than the uh, anniversary update. And when they, when they told me why, uh, they were like, remember that issue we had with webcams, which I was the one who wrote that up first. Um, they said, we're trying to avoid that. And I said, well, that's great because, um, yeah, you broke millions of uh, <laughs> webcams and they never worked and people couldn't podcast and do all that good stuff. So uh, it, the update's going to be rolling out pretty slow. This machine that I'm podcasting from, I'm not going to force the creator's update onto. I kind of want to, but then I was thinking about it. It's like, you know what? I actually want to see how long it takes for this machine to get it. Obviously, Microsoft is saying it's going to be slow. So don't expect on April 11th, if you're smashing F5 on Windows Update, that you're actually going to get it. So... Uh, you would think things like this, like a Surface Book, because this is Microsoft stuff, uh, you would think that these would be pretty high up on that pecking order for getting the creator's update. We don't know. Microsoft isn't giving us... The, I was looking for like that wink, wink, nudge, nudge when I was talking to them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't say it. So anyways, starting on April 11th, you know, be prepared to sit and wait. Now, you can force it on your machine. The ISOs are now available. You'll also be able to use the media creation tools. Um, so if you really want it, you can. But to be honest, there's not a whole lot in it that's going to, like, that's like, ah, I need this type scenario. So um, I'm going to wait as long as I can before I, I, I actually put it on this machine. But mostly just because I'm just curious how long it's going to take. And the stuff that's in it, it's like, eh, like, it's... <laughs> Um, I, I have to give this credit to Paul because he said it to me. <clears throat> uh, the most creative thing about the creator's update is actually the name uh, because Groove Music Maker, I asked Microsoft about this. They have no idea where it is. They won't tell me anything about it. I'm assuming it's not coming or it's some like super, st super stealth project that they announced in October but have no idea uh, when they're actually going to release it. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, Groove Music Maker, it's like... And then, uh, if you remember also from that event, I believe, uh, there was supposed to be a 3D scanning app, you know, where you could walk around with this thing, scan something, and then import it into Windows. Hey, it's not there. Um, so that's, that's two marks against creative things that were supposed to be in the creator's update that are not. Uh, Paint 3D, which if... I have no use for this. I'm sure that there are people out there that like this thing and that will use it. Uh, Paint 3D is coming, although fortunately Microsoft came to its senses and is also including paint as well, you know, the old classic paint. Um, yeah, 
classic paint is going to be there. It's Microsoft initially wasn't going to do this. And they actually told me uh, on a call that over 100 million people a month, 100 million people a month use paint, just the, the standard base paint. And it's like, you guys are going to change that? Like, you're going to you're going to change the app that 100 million people use and like, because uh, I don't think anyone was like calling up Microsoft saying, hey, include some 3D diorama stuff in paint. Um and then dedicate half an hour to it at the Surf Studio. But, uh, but anyways, so they're including both, thank goodness. And really what they should have done is just updated the actual paint app with the 3D stuff and just had a toggle for the interface. That would have been, that, that would have been their, uh, an easy way out. So there you go. Um, I had a note here. It says PC users will be able to manually install the creator's update starting April 5th. So just kind of keep that in mind. April 5th is probably the first day you can force it on your machine. Now, granted, it should help your machine run a little bit better, too. There, there are some good underlying fixes and other things. There's just not a whole lot of stuff. It, it's pretty light. And um, here's why. Redstone 3 is getting the priority. Uh, it became clear, I don't know, a couple months ago that Microsoft was like, they were they were looking at these updates and they said we have redstone 2 which is uh, and redstone 3 but hold on before i go to that uh the reason why i think they called this the creators update and i haven't heard anybody refute this very well so i'm going to run with this until until uh somebody tells me otherwise so you think about when they named the creators update it was round you know internally microsoft had to come up with this name probably sometime around the september timeline right they announced it in october so let's think about this the Surface Studio, which is a, a creative device, right? It's designed for people with pens. It's designed for people who are drawing and creating things. And they're like, ah, oh, we're going to have an update come out in the spring. Uh, why don't we tie it into the branding of the Surface Studio? Surface Studio is all about creator stuff. And then we'll do a creative update for Windows 10. And it'll be great. And ah, it'll all make sense. But, I mean, that's that's what I think how they came about this. And... um it's creators, but there's not really anything super creative about it. Uh, it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. I've already used this joke elsewhere, but I'm going to use it again because I think it's a good one. They should call the update Redstone 3 the creationist update. So that way we can all pray that things are actually going to make it into it that we want. Because I really want a Groove Music Maker because we do a lot of video and audio editing here for Throt and for other things. And I could actually use a, an audio tool like this where you can add in noises and stuff. Now, granted, I use Audacity currently, but I'm always about like trying to find new tools that are a little bit more expansive and have other options. And when I saw <laughs> Groove Music Makers coming, it's like, yes! And bam. They, you know, they, they, they literally pulled that rug out from under me. But anyways, so Redstone 3, Microsoft is already working on this. Um, they're already having their meetings, they're planning meetings. Uh, they're getting pretty close to having known a lot of the features that are coming. One of the features that I do know is on the agenda are placeholders for OneDrive. Uh, that is coming. That is that is on, you know, that's a pretty high line item for them for this update. Uh, so be looking on, on the lookout for placeholders. I'm almost positive we're going to hear more about this at Build, mostly because Microsoft told us to. And I got confirmation that, hey, placeholders are targeted for Redstone 3. Obviously, things can change because um, this is, you know, we're six months away, seven months away from when this thing will launch, probably seven months, maybe even eight months actually from what I'm hearing, but we'll see. Uh, late fall, early winter is when this is going to show up, October, November timeline. Uh, we know the neon design language that leaked out a while ago. That's going to be coming and that's going to give a nice little refresh to some of the apps. Um, there might be some taskbar things related to, we've seen uh, images of a white theme. Um, we'll see if that makes it in, but that was one of the concept images for an update for neon. Uh, what else do we have in here? Mobile. I'm hearing that mobile is going to see some love too. Um, actually, Continuum is supposed to get some updates as well. Potentially windowed apps finally. So right now, if you run Continuum, it's got to be full screen only. Uh, but I think that's going to change with uh, Redstone 3. I'm actually fairly confident that that's high on the agenda here, that they're actually going to start <laughs> building this out because Samsung is right on their butts with this stuff. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, along with, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big stuff for right now. I am suspecting they're going to hear more. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff that they want to do. Oh, the people bar, people bar, right? People bar is supposed to be in this release. Redstone two, the creators update didn't quite make it in. Um, so that will be coming with Redstone three as well. So actually, I mean, if you think about it right there, so you got placeholders, you've got some UI updates, you've got, um, mobile getting some love. I mean, that's actually a fairly big update for a second update to Windows 10 in a year. So, uh, 
that's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm happy about that. I just hope that they can get it all in and make it polished and clean and stable is the big thing here. Big thing. So that's Redstone 3. Uh, also announced this week, Microsoft made some big commitments to head-mounted displays. You know, the um, things from Dell and Acher. H Acher. 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 Good. Good English, Brad. Uh, HP. Acer, Dell, uh, Asus, um, and then there's like Three Glasses, I think is a company out of China. Uh, showed them off at CES, but they haven't been announced. or well, They've been announced, but they haven't been released. I, that's going to be a big push. Microsoft announced literally yesterday that they're creating a new uh, org inside of Microsoft um, specifically for mixed reality. So that, that, I'm assuming that means HoloLens as well, but especially... Uh, especially these devices, that they're going to start bundling them with Windows 10 PCs. And uh, they very clearly said, hey, for the marketing season of the holidays, this is going to be their big push. So we're, we're starting to actually see Microsoft's uh, 2017 holiday season coming together. And while it may seem early, they got to plan this stuff way in advance. So what they're going to be doing is there's going to be a lot of advertising blitz. It's like, hey, buy a new Windows 10 PC, get a Dell thing, uh, you know, get some VR, MR experience in your house. That's going to be a big push. And they have a new sales org. Um, they have a new CMO named Liz Hamren. She came from Oculus at Facebook. So she's now running this stuff. And that's how they're going to be pushing Windows 10 PCs. And we know more about their holiday season. Scorpio is coming out October, November, sometime around there. So that's going to be a big holiday push as well. So Microsoft's holiday shopping season is actually already pretty well defined. Granted, there could be other things, but they're going to have Scorpio and they're going to have uh, these Windows 10 PCs. They might have some Surface stuff. That'd be, wouldn't it be crazy if they had Surface Book 2 come out around then? And, uh, you know, that's a wrap. I mean, that's a pretty big holiday season for them. And I, the thing I'm, I'm still poking about is if these Dell and HP HMDs will actually work with the Scorpio. I would imagine they will, and I, I believe they will. But I haven't heard definitively if you'll be able to, you know, just take one and plug it in and be like, bam, there we go. Or if it's going to have to be something else. But that will be pretty interesting to watch. Uh, speaking of the Xbox, the creator's update. Well, I was about to point back here. I don't actually have it on the screen. This is uh, a mirrored image of my desktop. You can actually see that's X split right there. These are my show notes. And what you can't see is the chat room is over just a little bit further. But anyways, back on this machine or the screen is where I put it. Um, Xbox, the creator's update's now out. You can go download it. It's ready. It's good. It's stable. I've used it. I've already done the beam stream. I might do a little bit more of that because some people seem to like it and whatever. But uh, the funny thing about this is, is, so this is, granted, this is a relatively large update for the Xbox One, but it's not brand new, right? I mean, the Xbox One has been out. The same basic functionality is there. But what cracks me up about this is that when you install the creator's update, there's a new... Uh, what's called an OOBE or out of box experience. And there's actually a video that walks you through all the features. And it's great. To be honest, I actually watched the entire video and I kind of got brought up to speed. It was well done. What kills me about this is that Microsoft for a modest update to the Xbox console, I keep pointing back here, to the Xbox console felt they needed an out of box experience, but for Windows 8, they did not. And Windows 8 was such a dramatic thing. Like it was crazy. Like they did not do this for Windows 8, but they did it for, uh, yeah, they learned some painful lessons with Windows 8, and the individual who killed uh, the idea of that video, uh, Sanofsky, is no longer there, not under his own uh, decisions. Uh, he was asked to leave or told to leave, and then 8.1 came out, and they actually included some out-of-box experience stuff because people had no idea what the hell they were doing. So Microsoft has learned that out-of-box experience videos actually work, and yeah, so I, I, I highly recommend downloading the one for uh, the Xbox one, it seems to be good. It, I haven't had too many issues yet and we'll, you know, it's only been 24 hours for me, but we'll see. We'll see from there. Uh, other things that were announced this week, uh, the surface book performance base and studio are headed to new markets. You know, if you're outside the U S and like Australia and Europe, we're getting some stuff, but really, so that's great. And if you're in those markets, you know, go grab a performance base. Mine's performance base is right back there it's a great machine the studio is a great machine if you're in that market go grab one when it arrives definitely but what this actually really tells us too is that if microsoft is expanding the markets for the surface book performance space there is not going to be a surface book 2 at this uh spring hardware event that we keep hearing about that's hoping i was really hoping we would have had invites by now but um we haven't we haven't yet so yeah yeah, 
So don't expect a Surface Book 2. Mary Jo actually said that, so it all seems to align. You know, she always has great sources, so that kind of stuff. Other things, big stuff this week, Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S8 has been announced. And here's the crazy thing. So Microsoft has been telling us for a long time that they are committed to mobile hardware. Uh, Microsoft is going to be selling the Samsung Galaxy S8 in its stores. I don't think that's what people had in mind when Microsoft said that they were committed, but here we go. You'll be able to walk into a Microsoft store, buy an Android phone, but this is the crazy thing. What they're going to do is they're going to unbox it for you, which kind of annoys me. I like, you know, pulling it out. Then they're going to download a new image, uh, flash the phone, I guess, or whatever, and then install a whole bunch of Microsoft apps for you. I, yeah, um, <laughs> it, it sounds kind of crazy. Like, I thought that these, when I saw this, I was like, okay, so they're going to get custom S8s from Samsung, and you'll, you know, it'll be a Microsoft version, which is fine. I have no problem with that. The fact that you have to open it up and download all this stuff in the store like literally in their store is what's it's it's very odd like why would you want to go there like why why would you want to do that all these apps are available from the google play store really you're just letting somebody pull your phone out fondle it a little bit then hand it to you in, in an altered state i don't know um but if you want that option you can go do it more interesting thing about the samsung galaxy s8 is they announced the desk or DEX, uh, I believe it's called DEX, which is a continuum mode, putting in Microsoft terms here, this is a continuum mode for Samsung phones. And you put it in a dock and it goes to your screen and it creates a desktop environment. And to be honest, it looks pretty good. I, I need to get my hands on it. Granted, it is Android, so whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's not gonna have all your Microsoft apps, but it it, it out continuums continuum. They, they have done a better job implementing this and Microsoft has done with continuum. And this is the frustrating thing is Microsoft and even Microsoft wasn't the first to do this sort of a dock and have a, have a desktop experience. Uh, the Motorola Atrix, I think was one of the first or something like that. But what kills me about it is that Samsung is now leaped ahead of what Microsoft is doing. And it's like, are we going to have to wait until October to potentially see these things updated uh, with a better experience that is on par? It's like Microsoft had an advantage. And even though their mobile phones weren't selling, they should have been very diligent about updating Continuum because that was a true differentiator Microsoft had in a place they were besting the competition in all ways. And now Samsung has come and, and leaped ahead of them. And they are now going to be playing catch up because uh, DeX has, uh, at the very basics of things that are better it has continued apps or continued windowed apps so you, you can have a, it, it looks and feels more like a traditional desktop than some in some aspects of continuum granted it's not windows and blah 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 but uh i wish microsoft would have been more diligent with continuum because that it, we know that that's a future of computing and if microsoft misses that uh if Microsoft misses that, it's going to be bad news bears for them. Bad news bears. Bad news bears. So, all right, we're going to jump into the reader questions here because there are actually some really good ones this week. I mean, well, there's always good ones, but these are really good. So, uh, Elm Woody asks, he says, Hi, Brad, can you please investigate why LastPass isn't keeping their Edge plugin up to date? The LastPass version, really, and he goes off and lists um, all of the stuff about why uh, LastPass hasn't been updated for Edge. So let me take a step back. LastPass has come, not under fire, but LastPass has had some exploits uncovered and they've done a good job of fixing them, right? In a relatively good time. So what he's the issue he's pointing at is that the LastPass for Edge is still exposing some of these vulnerabilities. So if you're using LastPass on Edge, you're vulnerable to this stuff. Um, and why isn't LastPass updating them at the same capacity they are for all their other browsers? So I'll be pretty blunt about why I think this is. I don't exactly know, I mean, for sure, but here's my guess. Um, not many people are using Edge, which we know for a fact that Edge is not a very popular browser compared to say Chrome and Firefox. And so I think it just comes down to that, hey, it's just not a super high priority because the volume of users on Edge, because granted, you, People using LastPass in Edge is a subset of the Edge user base. Not every Edge user has LastPass installed. And so they look at the percentage of using it, and it's probably just not a priority. That's I know it sucks to say that, but that's honestly what I think the reason why they haven't updated it. Uh, Kadupa asks, he says, uh, so here it goes. Can Microsoft make a deal with cable service providers to make an Xbox their default DVR cable box? Uh, they can even make a contract system with $0 up front. What do you think? So... This is a very complicated question. Um, could they make a deal? Absolutely, right? I mean, anything can be done. 
I don't see them doing that. Here's the reason why. Um, cable companies make a lot of money off of those stupid boxes. First off, they rent them every month. You can't really buy them. So you have to buy, you have to rent the box for, you're usually paying like 10 bucks a month for it. And the Xbox One isn't exactly set up perfectly to be a great uh, set-top box. Because if it was, then we would see this. Microsoft actually already tried. Remember, they wanted this thing to be a... Uh, they want this thing to be like an all-in-one hub thing for like a media center. Remember, they want a TV, TV, TV. There's that you know YouTube video about that that bad launch, and I suspect that Microsoft is not going to deviate from that thing being viewed as a gaming console. And by signing up with the cable providers, it's going to put people that image back in their head that ah, we're not truly focused only on gaming with this thing. So it would be it would be tough for Microsoft to do that. It'd be tough. Uh, Mister PKI says Doc Stock com was taken down once but it's back up again and you can still search for tons of personal information and sensitive content why do you think microsoft was not concerned about exposing some of this okay so if i understand the issue correctly docs.com is a microsoft uh document repository we can go and upload stuff and share it if i remember correctly the default setting for content you upload is actually to make it public facing instead of private and so what you can do is you could just go into the, the search box on docs.com and just find tons of people's private information i don't really know what microsoft is doing here this is a very odd blunder for them because they generally protect the office brand and office content extremely well right it's where we typically see security features showing up sometimes first uh, office 365 is up on a pedestal inside of microsoft and they want nothing to screw with that and this docs.com flub is it's interesting because i you i would have thought that they would have over re over corrected um and when it's back online now it's still not fully fixed so um, if you have content on docs.com definitely check out your sharing and features and how it's all set up because some of that stuff might be public facing and some of it were like resumes that had some very sensitive information um people were saying that they were seeing um, like credit card numbers and all that kind of stuff. So be real careful about what you put on docs.com and make sure your sharing settings are set correctly because you don't want to get uh, doxed or hacked or whatever that way. Uh, so the reminder asks, he says, Windows 10 update isn't uh, Windows 10 updates isn't any more PC only. It's mobile, HoloLens, mixed reality, Xbox service hub. Uh, IoT, etc. Shall we consider Windows 10 creators update features across all these devices or only count those added to PC? So he's kind of asking about where where do we consider the feature line? Like when we're like Paul and I write this stuff up or anybody writes it up, it's like where do you draw the lines? Um, typically, when people think about Windows updates, they think about the desktop. Desktop still has the largest market share by far, and so that's that's where people look for the features. Uh, Surface Hub is getting an update. So if you've got a Surface Hub in your office, go check for that stuff and see what's coming. Uh, there are some enterprise features and advanced threat protection. Uh, there are some other, uh, you can now in place conversion UEFI. But the problem I think Microsoft had with this update is that they called it the creators update. So people were saying, okay, what are the creators updates? And right now, the only thing that's really in there are beam streaming, which I get, you know, is quasi creative. And um, I'm sure, uh, what's the other one? I can't even think of it now. But Paint 3D. Like, that's really about it. There's some pen stuff and whatnot. But the, the number of people who actually have pens with their computers is very, very small. Um, people are going to say, oh, but they sold a lot of services. In the world of computers, the Surface brand and PCs are, is extremely small. Uh, mostly because it's still relatively new, blah, blah, blah. You know, we can talk about market share, but it's still relatively small compared to the overall market. Uh, but to his answer, you kind of got to look at like at a per device because some of the things that are built into the Xbox stuff don't pertain to the desktop. Same with HoloLens uh, and like Surface Hub as well. So where do you draw the line? I think you draw the line on who your target market is and what you're trying to convey at that time. Uh, GJ Smith asks, he says, hi, Brad. One of the reasons my family is all in a Microsoft Windows products, uh, phones, TV, tablets, no Xbox, uh, is that Microsoft family management for device first kids, which is a, a very powerful reason to use Microsoft stuff. I, th they've been very good about this for the past couple of years. Family works great and has enormous potential, but still does not have a couple obvious and critical features, especially for sharing, uh, store purchase content, music, and all that good stuff. Recently, Google added family management tools eating into the differentiation Microsoft had in this area. Also, I received an email from Microsoft Family in December that included advice. Soon your family will have shared Outlook Calendar, and he says he hasn't heard anything about that. Uh, do, you think, do you think the next Windows update will be the family update? Mm, interesting. I don't know if it'll be the family update. I haven't heard that term tossed around yet. Microsoft does 
look at this stuff very intently about who their core users are. And this family stuff is interesting because uh, they've actually regressed a little bit. If you remember, there used to be Kids Corner on these mobile phones. Um, there's still similar things, but they've taken some of that stuff out. And Windows 10 does have great uh, management tools in there for allowing your kids on a computer. But Google, it, like these things aren't proprietary and they're not crazy. And there's even a lot of third-party software that allows for this kind of stuff. But Google is moving into this space, which means that Microsoft will probably take their time in updating when, again, they have the advantage, but they, they're not fully capitalizing upon it. The thing that kills me about Microsoft is they have over like 100,000 people. And they, like things like Continuum just... Like, you see nothing happening. Things like uh, this family stuff. It's like nothing's happening. It's like, wh are they all working on Azure? Um, I, I don't quite know why some of this stuff takes so long to update because this next question falls right into it. To, to answer your question, I don't exactly know what they're going to call the next update or what the focus or theme is going to be. Hopefully they don't do something dumb like Creators Update again where they say it's about creators and then fail to deliver on half of the stuff. But uh, family features are, are actually very... And, interesting mostly from a personal self level like i said my kids upstairs um hopefully taking a nap right now but i'm not too sure about that but i mean it's going to be impacting my life here very soon where she's going to be on a computer and you know we need to limit and make sure she's protected and <laughs> not downloading um malware and adware and all that good stuff on my machine but um it's interesting i, I need to poke around there uh kadupa asks uh, that's his second question but it's all good it says will microsoft ever make their movie and tv platforms uh available everywhere apple has a walled garden and android solutions are extremely uh broken between computers phones and tv if microsoft could open up their service and pull it to stores including amazon they might actually take the entire market what do you think so i agree Microsoft has done a ter like I, I hate to be so negative at Microsoft. We'll just talk about Xbox because they did a good job with the Xbox. Um, very good job. But th again, they have these movies and TV apps and they're only on the desktop. The problem is if, that if you buy them on your computer, it's not easy to get something up there because remember they had an Xbox streamer called Hobart was the code name uh, that I, I think I broke the news about that last year. And then they canceled it. So there's no easy way to get your stuff onto that screen, Microsoft. Um, even through the Xbox, like it can be a little daunting. And, it, and granted, not everybody really wants to buy an Xbox because as a fan, it can be kind of loud sometimes. Um, so they just want a little media streamer, which you don't sell. And so that's why movies and TV app, like I, I don't understand why this is so difficult. I'm guessing it's a licensing thing. I know that that industry is very uh, pain in the butt when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I'm guessing that maybe they can't because of their licensing agreements, but this seems like a completely missed opportunity. And this is, again, what I consider what Microsoft does 90% of the way. They have these apps, they have the whole entire infrastructure set up, but they don't really take it the next mile. They have it just to say they have it. And I, I'd love to know actually how many people are buying stuff through here if, it, if it's really paying off for them or how that whole works. Uh, last question comes from Elm, Elm Woody. He says, I suspect that the Harman Kardon uh, Cortana-based smartphone speaker clone of the Amazon Echo will cost more than $300. What do you think? So this is an a interesting question for a couple reasons. One, we haven't heard anything about this. And as a, as a reminder, Microsoft, what was it, back in December, announced um, an Amazon Echo-looking thing, we believe, that's made by Harman Kardon and has Cortana built in. Great. You know, I, I would love one of these things. It would tie all my Windows stuff together. I'm very much looking forward to this. But again, we haven't heard anything. And they're saying they think it might, he's estimating it might cost 300 bucks. If it costs 300 bucks, there's a very good chance it might be dead on arrival because the Echoes and everything else that are much more effective or effective have a lot more to them and a lot more plugins and all that stuff cost significantly less. Unless, unless... This becomes, uh, which micro, we already know Microsoft is looking to its partners to do this stuff. So unless their partners come out with a wide range of stuff starting at like 50 bucks and the Harman Kardon is like the premier device, then it may not be totally dead on arrival. But um, if, it, if it does cost 300 bucks, that seems high to me. Like this thing needs to cost, if it's the only device running this and like it's kind of owning the market, it has to be like 150 bucks or less. Ideally, because they're they're a late arrival, um, Google has theirs out. Because they're a late arrival, they, it needs to be like 99 bucks to be honest. But I don't, I, I that's hard for them because Harman Kardon has to make a profit on it, uh, and there's probably licensing involved with the Cortana thing, so it's going to be tough to get it super low, and it needs to sound and look good. So it's like. Eh. Uh, 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 uh. And as Adam Corbley writes in the chat room, uh, Cortana is useless outside of the U.S. So <laughs> that's 
I've asked Microsoft so many times and they keep telling me like, hey, things are, are fine, um, or whatever. Uh, so we're going to jump to the insider tip of the week here because we're hitting about that 30 minute mark where we like to wind it down. So insider tip of the week this week, uh, the creator's update is coming. I know we talked about this good to- lots of times, but really, if you are an, a Windows 10 insider and you don't want to be in the next wave of updates, like let's say you joined late because they were stable builds, um, the next builds that are going to be coming out are going to probably be much less stable. They may not have a whole lot of features yet. So now is a very good time to leave the insider program. Uh, if you need to know how to do that, just Google it or Bing it or whatever, and you'll find tons of tutorials on how to leave the insider program. But now is a good time to leave because you won't really have any impact because the build you are running today is the creator's update. So there you go. Uh, hopefully I answered all those questions. Hopefully um, we have a lot of people tuning in this week. So, as always, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Um, be looking on the stuff. Look on, be on the lookout for Redstone Three, especially those placeholders. I know I am. And as always, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy some basketball, a little bit of golf. I think the shell open. I'm playing golf on Sunday, so have a great weekend, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.